Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Francisco. Everybody knows me by Paco, Paco Siller, and I'm here with the wonderful Olivia and Zach Fields. We're getting Hi. into their introduction in a little bit, but of course, before we hear all about them and all the lovely things that they do, we got to go over some housekeeping items. So let's have a look at the schedule real quick. Boom, there it is. As you can see, we had a action-packed stream right before us. We're now at the noon segment. So coming up after us, we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge with the awesome Jesse Showalter. Guy has so much energy, so lovable. Make sure to tune in for that. And then after that, we're gonna end the day with Design in the Dark with Happy Impulse and Andrew Hawkrattle. We don't wanna play that <laughs> intro again. Um, cool. So here we are. Um, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and join us on Behance. That's where I'm gonna be looking at the chat. That's where we're gonna be answering questions. That's where you can engage with us. Speaking of the chat, I want to give the chat some love real quick. Uh, I have Voodoo Val, welcome, RMB, Steve, we got Maine, we got Jay, we got Cornell, we have Kevin Lee. What's up, Kevin Lee? Everybody, <laughs> welcome. Say hello to us. I want to know where you're from. Go ahead and get in the chat and just talk to us, all right? So everybody go ahead and let us know where you're at. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for all those responses to come in, let's go ahead and get into the introduction of Olivia and Zach Fields. Hello, welcome. What do you guys Hi. do? Please tell us all about yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. It was <laughs> very kind. We are so excited to be here. I'll just give a little like intro about ourselves. Um, my name's Olivia. This is my husband, Zach. Um, we actually are literally just in rooms right next to each other <laughs> right now. We are in the same place. But, you know, got to keep our workspaces separate. <laughs> um, but I am a photographer and I work a lot on social media as well. And then Zach is a whole array of things <laughs> explaining Zach's personality and his arsenal of talents is very tricky because he helps me with all of my video work. Mm -hmm. So I guess you can add a videographer to the title. He also is really good with finances. So he helps me with my business side of things on that front. He's also training to be a pilot. So mm -hmm. he has his private pilot license as well. So he flies, wow. he makes videos, <laughs> he handles all the Zach, bills. You're a man of many talents. I've been <laughs> it's talking to you for many, many minutes now. And I just learned that you can also pilot things. So, wow. <laughs> I can, yes. I'm doing that. <laughs> Yeah, so we work on a lot of my creative projects together since it's just great having like an in-house person, in-house production team, right? Right there with me. So we work on a lot of projects together. We primarily work in the like travel and lifestyle space. So prior to this year, <laughs> we did a lot of traveling and worked with a lot of like airlines and hotel brands and tourism boards, which was super fun and you know, fun. we're excited to get back into that someday but for now this is what we're doing we're chilling at home we're creating lots of fun content just around where we live which is oregon we live in the pacific northwest it's very beautiful zach was born and raised mm -hmm. here and i came here all the way from florida so very different <laughs> but florida, represent <laughs> yes florida. oh really where we're from uh central florida orlando Okay, nice. I'm from Tampa, so Tampa, That's Orlando, nice. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> See, um, well, speaking of all that you guys do, is I actually want to show some of your portfolio. So we're going to hop on you. to my computer. And here is Olivia Field's Instagram. So go ahead and give her a follow, show her some <laughs> love. Here you can see a collection of all of the work that she does. So we have video content, we have photography. Uh, right off the bat, Olivia, we can see that you definitely have a theme behind your photography. It's got this like warm sepia tone. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, super, I love my cool. warm, warm, cozy colors. <laughs> 
very warm and cozy. So this is her Instagram. Go ahead and give her a follow. And then right over here is her YouTube channel. So it's under Olivia Fields as well. And here's a video that you actually did in Kauai, which is in yeah. Hawaii. So let's have a look at a little bit of this just to kind of get a taste of what Olivia and Zach both do. One of our one and only travels of this year. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> Shout out to my graphic designer husband as well. <laughs> Today we're exploring Waimea Canyon. Well, and here we can also see those warm tones. It's definitely your signature <laughs> look. Some solid color grading. Thank you. Yeah, we had definitely had some interesting weather to work with when we were filming this video. So we didn't have the bright sunlight that we like to have in all of our shots, but we made it work. Definitely made it work. Yeah, so that's a taste of what she does. Again, let's go to that YouTube channel. So here's her YouTube channel. Go ahead and give Olivia Fields and Zach some love on this YouTube channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. She's full of awesome, awesome content. Thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> of course. All right, cool. So um, enough with the introductions. Why don't we actually jump into what we're doing today? So I'm going to hop on over to Zach's screen. We're going to be doing a dual workflow today. We're going to focus on Zach's part first. He's going to be doing the video editing part of things. And then we're going to jump into Lightroom afterwards with Olivia since she's the photography centric part of the duo. Um, so for now, let's go ahead and go into Zach's screen. And then Zach, I'll let you take it away and let us know what we're doing today. Sounds good. All right, so for today, we're going to work on a fun little video that Olivia and I shot over the weekend. Uh, we keep getting questions when we're you know, posting photos like, oh, what does this look like from behind the scenes of the shoot? And we re realize that we never really show, you know, what, what we work on behind the scenes of a photo shoot. So we kind of took the opportunity to document from like a third person perspective of what that looks like for us on a shoot. So we'll take you through, we kind of have a little, you know, little snippets right here that I've already edited, but we'll start from scratch and show you how we got there. Uh, so yeah, it should be a fun time. We've also got some photos incorporated into it because that's Olivia's strong suit. Obviously, we wanted to get good photos out of this shoot rather than just a video. So yeah, we'll show how we incorporate that into our video as well. Awesome. Before you do that, Zach, I'm going to give yeah. some love to the chat real quick while cool. we're at it. Uh, we had some people respond where they're tuning in from. Uh, we have Celia from California. We have Maria from Florida, Amber yes. from Arizona. <laughs> We have Von Z from the smallest state in the U.S. That's a trivia question. Do we know what he's... <laughs> is that Rhode Island? Rhode Island. It might be Rhode Island. I yeah, think. let us know, Von. Is that Rhode Island? Did we nail it? Uh, we have Moyes from India. We have people from Russia. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. It looks like it's a Russian name. Uh, yep, Rhode Island. We nailed it. Yes. And all the way from the East Coast. Cool. So and cool. And then right before that, um, I'm going to interject here and there with some questions just so we can answer questions from the community. I'm sure we'll probably touch up on this and let us know if we are gonna do that, Zach. But Victor is asking, what are the challenges to keep the tone colors consistent? Yeah, we'll definitely touch on that. <laughs> probably the last thing we work on today is just going through and making sure that we have a nice consistent look that also flows with Olivia's photography style. Yeah, I feel like that's the biggest question I'm always asked when I post videos is like, how do you make this look like your photography presets? Like, <laughs> that's the biggest question. So. That's definitely something we'll touch on because that's so important to me when it comes to like representing and building my brand is that it has a cohesive look throughout. And it's definitely very easy to achieve that, whether it's through your photos or your videos, you can kind of make them symbiotic with each other. So very excited yeah. to touch on that. Yeah, that's a big one. So stick around. We're definitely going to tune into that. Um, I feel like there's many, many ways to color gradings and there's ways to do it right. There's ways to do it maybe not so the right way, but we'll touch up on that in just a sec. So stick around. Yeah, that's definitely always always the challenge, but it's the fun part. For sure. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll just jump right in here. We'll start at the beginning. So this is obviously the finished product that you guys see on the screen right now. So let's go ahead and just do a new project so I can show you kind of what the workflow is, how we have everything set up, because one of the biggest things that I find is that having a nice organized project really helps you down the road and helps you to be able to, you know, find what you need and just creates a much quicker, more efficient workflow. So we'll make a new project here and I'll pick where I want it. 
So this is just on my hard drive. And let's call it Olivia Fields photo shoot behind the scenes. And take notes, everybody. Project planning or just having organization, as Zach said, is so mm -hmm. big with video editing. I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. You know, once you start off small, you, you may think it's manageable to just kind of put things in one folder. But as you start getting into very more complicated productions and all different types of B-roll and footage and audio, all that organization really, really starts to pay off. So the sooner mm -hmm. you pick that habit up, the more it's going to pay off in the future. Absolutely. All right, let's hop into Finder here and I'll kind of start from the very beginning of where we like or how we organize our footage outside of Premiere as well. So we have a folder for each video that we do. And in that folder, I like to keep a couple of, you know, just basic things that we always have. We always have an After Effects project for titles, intro sequences, all of that. Our audio for the videos, so whatever our backing track is, any ADR, any voiceovers, we keep all that there. And then all of our footage as well. And then the final rendered project. So for this particular one in the footage folder, I've got three different sources that we're working with. So we shot some stuff on our iPhones while we were walking out to the shoot, just to kind of give you guys a little behind the scenes of what the shoot actually looks like rather than just seeing the final product. All of the footage that we shot on the actual camera and then some screen recordings, which we'll work with at the very end of the video. And I'll show you guys how we're gonna integrate that into cool. it. And Zach, I'm sure we're gonna get this question sooner or later. So yeah. I'm gonna get it out of the way now. <laughs> What iPhone did you use to shoot that footage and what's the camera that you're using? Yeah, so we have iPhone 11 Pros. I have the Max, Olivia has the, the smaller size one, but cameras are the same. And then for our main camera, we shoot with uh, Fuji X-T3, which is nice. definitely a little unconventional compared to yeah. what most people use, like a 5D or a A7, but we love the camera. It's really small, really compact, and it just gets beautiful footage as you'll see in a little bit. And then we actually record all of our video onto a, a Tomos Ninja. So just to get that really high quality ProRes footage and we shoot an F-Log as well so that we have a nice flat footage to work with. So that also will play into the coloring conversation that we have later on how we make the footage look so pretty. Love it. All right, looking at the chat one more time. We yeah. have, ooh, we have a lot of people tuning in from all over the world. This is really a worldwide audience here. I love it. So cool. Val Super is apparently cool. from a different universe. She's saying Tatooine. <laughs> reference there. Uh, we have Nancy from Wisconsin, Bruno from Mozambique. Uh, we have more Florida people, Dan from Kentucky. Wow. <laughs> uh, Steve Beck from New Zealand. New Zealand, love that place. I've actually done quite a bit of photography there when we spent six months there and that you like oh, landscape wow. photography? <laughs> Beautiful. Where it's at. And Steve, I think, is from Christchurch as well. Yep. So cool. Uh, awesome. Cool. Let's get back into it. All right. So we've got our blank project here. So let's go ahead and import all of our footage and assets that we have. So you can either import it, you know, through the file menu or you can just drag and drop. So I'll put my footage in here. Let's go ahead and bring in the audio for now as well. And I think that's all we need to get started. So we'll make our new sequence and we have, let's see, let's do a custom one. All right. uh, That's a lot. So here in the sequence panel, what is it? Um, what yeah. are the settings that you go to? Are these kind of like your go-to sequence settings or are you kind of making this sequence specific to this project? Yeah, we always have the same ones and I'm on a on a different uh, premiere right now, but and usually we have presets that are made so that we just can click our custom preset for 4K that matches our camera and then we're all good to go. But right now I'll kind of walk you through it. So we'll do custom, just a 4K, 3840 by 2160, square pixels, you know, 24 frames per second. Pretty straightforward for 4K. And then we'll just call this uh, the same as our project. So a photo shoot. BTS, and let's call this the main sequence because this is where we're going to be doing all of our work. Cool. All right. So we've got our sequence here. And then the, you know, once you've got that all set up, that's pretty much the basics of your project setup. I like to keep everything in its own folder. So we'll go ahead and make a new bin here and we'll all call these our sequences just in case we end up making more sequences down the road. And I'll put that in there. 
and then yeah we can start going through our footage so i guess kind of just talking a little about the shoot and how we found this location um we were we've shot there once before i think olivia saw a friend that had you know taken some photos at this place it's in the columbia river <laughs> gorge just outside of portland and yeah, Olivia, why don't you tell that story about kind of how we <laughs> stumbled upon yeah. this place? Location scouting is definitely very important. And how we found this location in particular was I saw a photo of like a local photographer who took a photo there and I did not know where it was and the location wasn't tagged, which I respect. I respect when people, you know, keep like nature like private and they don't like overdo it. But I really wanted to shoot there. And so... I got together with another photographer friend of mine and we were trying to figure it out. We couldn't just by like looking at different photos of the shoot. And then we showed it to Zach who is local and native to this area. So he kind of like knows the whole landscape very well. And he was like, oh yeah, I recognize that rock. I know exactly yeah. where that rock is. Nice. And so we found it by like going on this like rock. Google, like Google maps, like street view and like dragging and dropping like the little person and trying to figure out where it was and that's how we found this location was on google maps so location scouting at its mm -hmm. technological that's a job in itself right <laughs> it is you Definitely. see all those beautiful pictures of people uploading on instagram and i mean they're not going to be so quick and giving that spot away right because if they Definitely. tag it then everybody's going to be there so mm -hmm. i would encourage everybody to kind of do some lo location scouting as olivia and zach did because a it's super fun Oh, yeah. Exploring the outdoors, which is amazing in its own right. And you're kind of finding your own spot that's off the beaten path. Absolutely. Um, and I, I have to nerd out for a second, Zach. I was looking at yeah. your photos and it. I, I saw some equipment there and we, we got to talk about this. We got to yeah. geek out for a second here. This shot. So it looks like you have a slider and then that's your Atomos Ninja, I think. Yeah, so why don't correct. we let people know what, what this equipment does and what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. So I was just uh, swiping through a couple of the photos we took to kind of show you guys what this location looked like from even further behind the scenes than we were showing. So we've had a little slider that we brought out. We actually just rented this because we don't have a slider at the moment, but we're probably going to get one after after this shoot because it was just super fun to use and it got some beautiful shots. So this is our camera, our X-T3 uh, on the slider. And then we've got the Atomos Ninja here. So it basically takes the HDMI feed off of the camera and records it onto a solid state. Uh, actually, I have one right here. And just so everybody knows, why would we want to do that instead of recording internally into the body of the camera? Totally. Yeah, the reason that we do that is because it gives a way higher quality image. So instead of compressing it and recording it to an SD card, it gives a ProRes compression, which is much more lossless. So it's a lot higher quality, a lot easier to manipulate the colors on kind of if anybody does photography, the difference between shooting raw and shooting like JPEG, it, it's, it's very similar to that. And yeah, definitely. It, That's the metaphor I like to say. It's, it's kind of like, you know, it's not so to say the exact same, but it's like shooting raw with photography. With photography, mm -hmm. you shoot raw, you have all that information to manipulate later to get creative. You don't want it all baked like a JPEG. Mm -hmm. starts to, you start to see compression artifacts if you push it too much. Um, and by what Zach's doing is you're recording it raw to a different external recorder, you're able to retain a lot of that information through lossless codecs. Exactly. Yep, so that, that's kind of our setup. We shot with that a lot. We also had a Ronin, which I don't think we have in any of these photos. That's just me with the slider again. But yeah, a Ronin's kind of just like a handheld gimbal, helps keep it nice and stable. So I'll call that shot out when we get to those. All right. So that's kind of the, the basic setup. So let's go through the next step that I like to do when I'm working through my footage is I go through all the clips and kind of mark the ins and out points in them. So we'll look at this clip and this is one of the slider shots we were just talking about. And we did it a couple times until we got it, you know, nice and smooth. And then they're not very expensive. Our, our money shot, yeah, that looks good. So we'll kind of say that was the end of it. Mark right around there for the beginning. And then we'll just drag this into the timeline. So you'll notice it'll give us a little error. It says, oh, you know, it doesn't match the sequence settings. That's just because our camera shoots a little bit wider than standard 4K. So that's fine. We'll just say keep existing settings. Uh, and then we'll just move on to the next clip. So again, this is just another slider shot of the same thing. So I feel confident about the one I have. So I'm just gonna skip past that one. So real quick, Zach, why are we yeah. setting in and out points in that source monitor? What's that allowing us to do? Totally. Instead of 
Yeah, so setting these in and out points on this monitor is basically saying this is the part of the footage that I'm really interested in keeping. So it's the good part of the shot that I'm going to edit with down the road. Get rid of all of the all of the junk that we don't need, all the moving around and shakiness. And I feel yeah, like we sure. should also mention like how you do that, like with the, the keys to press to actually mark the in and out points. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I like really am into using keyboard shortcuts as much as I can. It makes the workflow so much easier. So for this particular thing, uh, it, I marks the endpoint and the O key marks the out point. You Makes can also <laughs> use these curly brackets and you'll see it says next to mark in, I is the keyboard shortcut. So definitely I use keyboard shortcuts for just about everything in Premiere. It's super handy. It's it's huge. I mean, honestly, the, the more that you use this programs and the more you live off of them, just by cutting out like three or four seconds of clicking something or clicking around, if you can cut that out with just hitting shortcuts, I mean, you really start to save a lot of time and it just makes you way more efficient the faster you get with the keyboard and the shortcuts. It really starts to amp up and speed up that editing process. And what Zach is doing right here is he's going through all the shots, getting his selects, picking in and out. I would say this is a bulk part of editing right now is you have so much footage to sort through. And when you're out there, you wanna shoot everything and anything. You know, you wanna Absolutely. cover all your bases. Uh, but of course, the more footage you shoot, the more you gotta sort through it. <laughs> this, is the, this is a lot of it where you're actually sorting through the footage and picking the in and out points and just kind of trimming all those unnecessary parts and getting the best out of those clips and starting mm -hmm. to like build a sequence in a timeline. Yeah, definitely. It, it's a catch 22. You always want to shoot as much as you can, but then you sit down to edit it and it just, I know, it can take a really a long conundrum. time. Yeah. yeah. You just, I'm happy you we're sharing anything. on your screen because I don't have to do it. Sometimes <laughs> right. it makes me cool through it. So I'm, I'm happy right now. just sitting no, back I'm and busy, watching. Like, you can, you can do that, right? You can get that ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So kind of the first few shots we had were B-roll. So what I like to do is I kind of break my video into sequences of how I'm logically going to work through the video when I'm editing it. So you'll see I dropped this one clip over here and then these two over here. So these were the first two kind of B-roll shots. So I always group that together so that I know if I need a B-roll shot to cut in, I've got kind of a block of B-roll that I can go pick from. And so then this next section is where we're doing the first set of photos at this photo shoot. So Olivia's out in the field and we just got like a nice slider shot of her walking out and kind of twirling around. Fields one in thing, the fields. <laughs> <laughs> one thing to note too is we shot everything here in 60 frames per second. Uh, cause it was pretty windy and we liked being able to, you know, slow down some of that footage if we needed to, to help fill time or to just give that really cool kind of slow motion effect. So for this one shot in a few, since it was just the two of us shooting, we shot it in a couple of different sections. So basically there's three parts to each one of these photos that we're shooting on this photo shoot. So we had the establishing shot of Olivia walking out and kind of getting in position of where she's going to be. And then we have this shot, which is more just like a tripod shot of me standing out there taking the photos, um, which is a trick because we weren't actually taking photos. This is actually a film camera. We were just <laughs> using as a prop for this shoot because we only have one camera. So nice. we're going to kind of go in and mark our in and out here. Just this whole clip's pretty good. We'll, we'll cut it down a bit more in, when the time comes, but we'll just drag that in for now. And then, so the third piece is we actually had the, the camera, we, we just recorded as if we were shooting photos. So to sort of mimic what the monitor would look like. And we'll show you, we kind of have a really cool effect we'll put on that at the end of the video today of how we made that look like we're actually looking through the viewfinder. It's really fun. So you can see it's just kind of shaky, handheld, like whatever kind of footage it flashes when we autofocus. It's not perfectly in focus. Just a nice kind of real life raw sort of video. So that's a good little section of it. Yeah, I think that's really important to like just from a photography standpoint for people to be able to see like the like a video like of what it actually looks like. Because sometimes you see someone take a photo or a video and you're like, how did like, how did they actually get that shot? But being able to like go behind the scenes and show people like what we saw when we were actually creating the content, I think is really cool. So those are kind of the three sections of this particular one. So we'll go through one more and then we'll jump into a little further down the road, a sequence that we already have all of this cut through to kind of save you the bore. But our establishing shot, Olivia walking out, me taking the photos and then through the viewfinder. Those are the three pieces. 
So we'll go through just one more of the little scenes that we shot, sort of the same deal. Her sitting down and like getting ready. Yeah, maybe right in there. That's a good and I love spot. how there's only two of you, but the way that you're making these shots, it looks like kind of there's a third party involved, right? Like kind of the behind the yeah. scenes. You so see. That's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> there was supposed to be a third person who canceled like an hour before we left for the shoot. Oh, man. So we improvised, but I actually love it. Like when we were there shooting, I was just thinking this is going to be such a cool end product video. And we're going to be really proud that we did it with just the two of us. Yeah. That's very so, awesome. Yeah. That's that's a that's a good part of what videography is, right? I mean, a lot of the times things don't go as planned. I mean, ideally you want them to. That's why you have countless hours of pre-production. Yeah. But sometimes you just got to improvise and make things work. And clearly here, you two are definitely making it work. I mean, it seems like you have this on a tripod and then both of you are in front of the camera. So really cool behind the scenes moments here. Yeah. yeah. Zach did a lot of dancing around on that shoot. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of interesting. I hope we get to see footage of that, Zach. We've seen <laughs> well, video, yeah, dancing this around. is it. Yeah, we're just like, because we're not actually taking photos here. So this is all just just for camera, you know. We, we would around. have been taking photos, actually, if the third person had showed up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so we'll just kind of throw that down there. And then I think there's one more clip here. So we actually shot vertical, too, because, you know, so you take photos in horizontal portrait, you know, or landscape, either way. So we thought it would be kind of fun to show how we could you know make that come through as well in the video for behind the scenes so that'll be a fun little trick we'll do later as well to make it look good all rotated and yeah i love video. shooting vertical video obviously it's like very relevant right now just with all the different social media like mobile applications but i think it's something that actually a lot of people don't know how to do and especially like when they're editing vertical video like in a nice cinematic format like this i feel like people can get a little scared of like how to format things so mm -hmm. I'm very excited to show people mm -hmm. all the possibilities of vertical video. We have Kevin Lee commenting that awkward moments and poses are the best shots. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I agree. They, they really can be very, very interesting. And that's something I think Olivia will touch on a little bit too, is just always being willing to like try something different to get a cool photo because you never know what's going to turn out and be just the neatest thing. I agree. We, uh, we used to have to shoot a lot of B-roll at this little production company I used to work for. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they taught us or one of the biggest takeaways I got is just to shoot anything and everything with B-roll. Like even some like Absolutely. weird things, right? Like we, we were shooting in Lake Tahoe and I remember my brother got like there was there was a bench overlooking a lake and then he got below and just shot the feet against the lake, which just looks weird and awkward. But that shot ended up making the final cut because it just looks like someone relaxing next to a lake. So yeah, just be willing to try all sorts of things when shooting. You'll be surprised. Some things you thought would make the cut actually do end up making the final cut. Yeah. So one last thing, uh, just before we jump into the next section, we've got these couple different sections, like I was saying. So this is one of the photo photo shoots that we did. And then this is the next set of photos. So I logically like to break everything up but also it's really handy in Premiere. You can label these clips with different colors. So I like to keep my B-roll a different color so that I know just visually right away, oh, that's a B-roll shot, that's not a main shot. So you can go in here and do label and you can change and pick any of these colors that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and pick mango just because I know that that doesn't contradict any of the other standard Premiere label labeling colors. For instance, you'll see later nested sequences are different color, After Effects comps are different color. So this just kind of visually breaks it down. I know that this is my B-roll. When I need to grab it, it'll be there and it'll be ready for me. Sure. And then the blue is just the regular, like the main footage that we're looking for. We have a question from the chat. Juan is asking, what social media is this meant for? Isn't most social media video a one-to-one -one ratio? It's a good question. Yeah, go for it, Olivia. You can pick that one. Yeah, so typically, if we're making a video, it's usually for my YouTube channel or like for a client and they want the video for, depends on the reasoning, but we also make a lot of videos just for social media in regards to like Instagram, like IGTV or Instagram videos, Instagram reels, etc. So a lot of times we'll make a video like this and we'll have like uh, like standard like copy for YouTube and then we'll go in and like re-edit and format everything for vertical. We actually did that um, on a video for Adobe uh, like a month or so ago. We had to create kind of like a 
landscape and a portrait version of the same video. So that's something that we do pretty often, but definitely. Yeah, it kind of just depends on what platform we're shooting for. But typically, I feel like we're shooting in just like a normal landscape format for yeah. like a YouTube video. Yeah. Which is what, what this the, one's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the cool features that came out with some of the more recent iterations of Premiere Pro is actually auto reframe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can get that a little bit later once we have a final edit. But just with the click of a button, you can literally change the aspect ratio of a video so it conforms to different social uh, social media platforms like Instagram, which has that more square based aspect mm -hmm. ratio before mm -hmm. you had to like keyframe it and reframe yes. everything, but it just kind of does. It. It's super simple. I've used it in the past. Big fan of it. Yeah. Adobe definitely has a lot of very cool features that are always coming out. It's always so fun to see how they make a process that took an hour, take five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we'll definitely go through some of those. And that's a, like a little shout out to, to Adobe uh, Premiere Rush, which is like the iPhone version, which is so easy for making like shorter form, like Instagram clips or something like that. Mm -hmm. I've definitely gotten that question a lot recently because if I just take a few clips on my phone or my camera and I import them into Premiere Rush, I can do, you know, essentially the same thing. I can, you know, cut them, like paste them together. And it just turns out to be like a really cute little like short form video that can be done a little easier than like bringing everything into your desktop as well. Absolutely. All right, so let's kind of jump in. Uh, this sequence is one that I, like I said, I already edited all of this stuff together. So basically just to save you guys some time, these are all of the little sequences that we just went through. So this one with this first scene and then the next scene down on the ground. And then our B-roll over here is colored differently, just like I had said. So now we're ready to actually start cutting the video together, which is in my opinion, the fun part. Culling through the footage is just so time consuming and boring, but <laughs> now's the fun part. So I like to start with audio uh, because I think audio is really what drives the video. So, you know, everybody kind of has their own style, but I definitely like to start with making sure that my audio is cut to the length that I want the video to be and make sure it flows well and all the levels are good. So for this particular clip, which Olivia can probably like talk to a little bit more, uh, we picked it from music bed and you know, it, she, she can probably elaborate a bit more on the music picking process, but this one happened to be the exact length that we wanted. So we'll just drag that straight into our timeline here. And I keep all of our like clip audio that we don't want just on the first track. And I keep it muted because we're never going to use any of this audio since this video is just driven by music. So I keep all of it on the first track and then audio is always on my, or the song is always on my second track. So we'll drag that in here. And then this new essential sound panel, which is, relatively new, I believe, to Adobe. At least I just started using it about a year or so ago. Uh, you can tell Adobe Premiere what kind of sound you're listening to. So for instance, this is music. And it's really helpful when you have dialogue because it can auto duck all of the backing audio, which was such a time consuming process before this happened. Like Paco said, you had to make keyframes and it was just terrible. So now this saves so much time, it's fantastic. But just really quickly, we'll select music as our preset and just auto match the sound so that it sets it to the proper loud, loudness level that we want. And that's really all there is to adding the audio in. We don't have to cut this clip. It was already the right length. So that is super helpful. Some pro tips right here. That's awesome. All right. So then now we got to think about how we want to start our video out. And I personally like starting the video out kind of flowing with the music. So let's listen to the music. It starts out really quiet and then kind of builds a little bit. And it's kind of just like fun and slow. So I think the best way to start a video out is with B-roll to kind of grab the people's attention, grab the prettiest shots that you have. So for us, I think it's these really cool, tight, full of bokeh shots of the grass. Got to give the people what they want. It's all about <laughs> that shallow depth of field. Exactly. Can't so honestly, deny it. <laughs> yeah, you really want to, I mean, you have what, a couple seconds to grab someone's attention. So, you know, right here, this shot already stands out. First of all, you got the slider. That's going to make anything <laughs> cool and dramatic. <laughs> then you got that shallow depth of field. So already this is a pretty cool shot and it definitely mm -hmm. has my attention. So Cool. All right, so we've got this shot. And if you look at this right now, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about shooting in F-Log. And it's really flat file format. So you can see there's not a lot of contrast. There's not a lot of color on it. That's what comes from our monitor, which is awesome. It may not look great at first, but it gives you so much room to work. 
So the first thing I like to do, just so that I can see what my footage is gonna look like before I color it and everything, is I'll go in and make a new adjustment layer. And this will be where our final color grade for the video lands is on this adjustment layer. So I'll drag that in above this footage because we want it to affect everything underneath it. That's what an adjustment layer does. And I'll pop over to the Lumetri color panel. And for our particular camera, there's a LUT, which is just like sort of like a little preset that you can drop on it that makes the footage look more colorful and more like what you would see on the back of a camera. So we'll go ahead and we'll go and pick our LUT here. While you're doing that, Zach, we have a question yeah. from the chat from Zenep. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, when you edit a video for IGTV, do you change the ratio during editing? Isn't it lowering the quality question mark? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, we actually usually make each video for one particular platform. So if we're going to make an IGTV video, we'll start with our sequence settings built around that video. So I believe it's four by five is the ratio for IGTV. So we'll set our sequence to that ratio first and then start cutting everything from there so that we don't lose any quality. We're still working with the native video files. They're, they'll just be scaled down to fit that size. Or yeah. sometimes like output. we'll just shoot vertically with the camera, like of shoot course. video vertically yeah. instead of horizontally. All right, so as you guys can see, when I threw that LUT on there, I'll just turn it off really quick so you can see the difference. It just brightened up the image, kind of brought it to life. It's not any actual color correction or color grading. It's just basically extracting all that data from the image and making it look how we would expect to see it out of the camera. So that just yeah. makes it a little bit easier for me to edit and just see what it's going to look like rather than just boring flat footage. Yeah, this is a big one, especially when shooting flat footage. Uh, what you want to look for is something called like a Rec. 709 LUT. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the fancy term for kind of like standardizing your footage to make it look nice. So mm -hmm. that way you're not staring at like a flat, boring uh, lot. <laughs> exactly. Footage. And I think that one had 709 on it. Or it where, did. What was Correct. the name of that lot, Zach? Just for the uh, uh, Fuji film shooters out there? Straight from Fuji. Let's take a peek. Oh, this came straight from them. Awesome. Yeah. So you can download with their cameras. They have like a pack of all of their LUTs. Um, and they have three for each one. So I'm doing this wide dynamic range 709. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just pick that from them. I assume each camera manufacturer that has some sort of F log or some sort of log file, which is that flat color footage. Yeah. I assume you could find a, a Most LUT of them for do, that. for sure. Yeah. yeah, but this one came straight from Fuji. So that was super easy. Didn't have to search too hard for it. All right. So now we've got our first clip in. And let's just kind of listen to this starts really quiet. So maybe we'll slow this down a little bit to make this clip last a little longer. So again, since we shot in 60 frames per second, we have a lot of room to work with because our final project is at 24 frames per second, which is pretty standard. So we can slow it down all the way to, you know, 40% if we want. And that should be pretty much exactly slowed down to 24 frames per second. So we can see kind of nice, slow, wispy, ethereal sort of vibes. So we'll start with that. And now we're actually gonna make our title card now because we like to have, you know, like that first shot to really grab your attention and then a fancy like title card to say, oh, this is, you know, how we, or what the video is about. So Olivia is really into hand drawing these things. So she uses <laughs> know, Adobe I've Sketch. Got the iPad right here. Yeah. So there's, there's probably a few more things I wanna draw for you as you're editing, but. Perfect. This is such a collaborative workflow. I love it. <laughs> like, you yeah. both are just taking the best talents that you have and making it all work with this video project. It's so cool to see it. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, so again, I drew. I... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I drew a few like title cards and a few other things that I want him to put in the video yesterday um, and sent it over to him. So he already has a few of them. But um, as he's like going along, if there is a little spot where I feel like, oh, this could need like, this like I don't know just something um I'll just kind of like draw something and then airdrop it over to him see if it looks cool if he and puts mm -hmm. it into the video so yeah again kind of just going back to that file structure everything she draws gets its own folder called graphics so I know this is where all of that stuff is so let's create our new After Effects project this will just be a really simple one we'll dive more into detail in After Effects later but we'll start our After Effects project here in this folder and let's just call it Okay, same project name, I'm not going to change any settings. 
Oh, that was in Premiere, not After Effects. So Olivia, why don't you tell them a little bit about kind of how you draw those photo or draw your like title cards and what your inspiration is for those? Yeah. So what I love doing with videos or even just photos in general, I love just like incorporating multiple form, like multiple mediums of creativity. So even if I'm doing just like a photo for Instagram, sometimes I'll like draw something and then, you know, make it animated and make it into a little like still life video. Or if we're doing a video like this one, I like to add in some photos that we took while we were there because that just, I don't know, I get to incorporate different mediums and then getting to incorporate these uh, little like sketches that I use uh, draw in Adobe sketch is fun as well. So obviously for a type of video like this, we could just add in a little title sequence and you know, type out behind the scenes of a photo shoot and pick a font and we'd be good to go, which I definitely do <laughs> quite often. But if I have the time and I wanna just make it a little bit more like unique to me and my brand, I will just, you know, pop into Adobe Sketch and just draw something out or write out what, you know, I want the title of the video to be, or if there's any specific little like images I want, I'll just like sketch something mm -hmm. up. And then it's really easy. I can just save them as a PNG and airdrop them right to Zach and he can just save them and pop them in. All right. So in After Effects, you can see I've got my folder created and I've dropped in the title that Adobe or that Olivia created for me. I am Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've also got the background texture, which she also made in Adobe Sketch. It's just kind of a fun little like textured tan background that you'll see in a minute. So again, I have a preset or I guess After Effects has presets for 4K. So it's already all set up exactly how we wanted it. I'm just going to make a 10 second comp. We might cut it down. We'll see. So this is our composition. It looks very similar to Premiere. Same kind of deal. You can drag and stack your different assets. So just like that with those two, we've already got a pretty, pretty good looking title sequence, but we're going to animate it just a little bit. Got to keep it fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we'll take the scale down because we don't want it to fill the scene too much. Maybe like 50% looks good, maybe 65. And again, that keyboard shortcut is S and it just brings up scale rather than giving you this whole menu, just to kind of keep it nice and simplified just with what you're working on. And then I'm gonna animate the rotation just to kind of make it wiggle a little bit. And we'll do it nice and consistently. So we'll start a keyframe. So we'll set our first keyframe and let's start with, let's just go 10 degrees either way. So we'll do negative 10 there. And then I'm. let's go to eight frames in, which is a third of a second. We'll add another keyframe there and make it 10. And this looks pretty good. It, you know, wiggles from one side to another, but we want it to be choppy. So we don't want it to have this nice smooth animation. So we'll just go one frame before it and set this to negative 10 as well. So that way nothing changes between these two keyframes and then boom, one more frame and we're on the other side. And then we'll pretty much just duplicate this all the way down to the end. So we'll go to 16 frames and we'll do the same thing. Yeah, this is great. This is After Effects keyframing 101, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> really you'll live explain. in keyframes in After Effects. Yeah. And I like what you're doing up there. Uh, it's actually not a workflow that I personally use, but it's super useful is you're actually typing in the frame that you know you want to do and then typing it in there. That's yeah, there's that's very useful. There's definitely a lot of ways to do it. I'm super OCD, so I like to have everything on exactly yeah. the number I want it on. But yeah, you can totally do it any way that you want. It'll get yeah, the that job way done. super useful. And so what I just did there is I just copied and pasted the keyframe so that we don't have to keep going back and forth because we just mm -hmm. want this to kind of bounce back and forth. So it's the so same cool. exact thing, just repeating over and over again. There's many different ways you could do this. This just was the easiest one for me. Yeah. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The only thing that I like to add, uh, it kind of goes along with keeping this consistent with Olivia's style for her Instagram. And she has a lot of like film grain on it, on her Instagram. So I always just go over here and add in a little bit of noise, which is just a built in effect in After Effects. So our effects browser comes up over here and let's just do like 5%. And you won't really see a whole lot, but you can see it just kind of gives it a nice little texture on the background. I don't know if it'll come through over the screen. It's, it's a little hard to come through this, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's there a little bit. But believe me, all these little things that when you start stacking them up on top, like little grain here and there and all that, it really kind of makes this whole picture unique instead of just not adding those little elements. 
Absolutely. All right. So then to get this to Premiere, it's super easy. The two um, applications talk really well. So we'll just go into our project here and grab this title card. And then we'll switch over to Premiere and we'll just drag it Boom. in. Drag and drop. Reverb Mike says, you could use a wiggle expression. And yep. So as I, Zach said, there are many, many ways to do this, just like mm -hmm. Photoshop or the majority of the Adobe apps. There are many ways to get one output. And yeah, yeah that's so, one of them to do. So that we were teetering on expressions here and they could be a little daunting, but once you know how mm -hmm. to use them, then you'll make things very, very simple. Yeah, initially, actually, that's a, a good point that you brought up is the wiggle expression is what I use. The only reason that we didn't like that is it just makes it a little bit too choppy because it, yeah. it it doesn't do the like dropped frame sort of vibe that we were going for. So that's why we didn't use wiggle, but we will use wiggle in another further down the road because it's a super yeah. useful, probably the most useful expression I think that I use in After Effects. Yeah. All right. So we'll drag this in. And it's important to note that I put it above the adjustment layer because I keep all my After Effects comps above the color grading because I don't want this LUT to affect what I just did in After Effects. See how it kind of, it just makes it look funny. So putting it up there, now it looks exactly how I want. All right, so now we've got this, so we'll listen through. And then we'll stop it right about there. That sounded about good. Uh, one thing that I like to do that's maybe not common knowledge, but something that naturally everybody I think kind of leans towards is when I make my cuts, I try to make them in beat with the music. You don't always have to, but it just kind of helps them to naturally transition into the next clip. Good old so come got, to the beat. <laughs> so we've got our clips here. We've got our title card. And then the way we wanted to start out the video is with these few iPhone clips that we shot, which again, see how these are underneath this adjustment layer. So it makes them look super wonky. <laughs> we'll do the same thing with them and we'll drag them up above the adjustment layer because shooting on an iPhone doesn't give you that nice flat color. It's just already ready to go. Hey, Zach, do me a favor. Your audio got really low. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think loopback might be the culprit. So okay. let's go ahead and check that and make sure that's at 100%. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Is that's, that better for you? That is. Actually, go back to loopback real quick. Yeah, totally. Uh, yep. Okay. That's a lot better. Thank you. All right, Sweet. Back to your screen. Sorry about that. Cool. Back to no you, worries. Zach. All right. So we've got our iPhone videos here. So we'll just drag them as the next thing in. And I'm just going to drag all four of them there, even if that's not exactly how they're going to be cut, because this is the order that I want them in. So we'll just drag them in and we'll kind of look through. Okay. So this is what we're working with. These are our four, four clips of iPhone, like getting set up for the photo shoot, which Olivia we'll have a drawing that we'll put in later in the video. I'm drawing so got... you a camera right now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so those of you who don't know and are just tuning in, Zach is working on a video edit from some behind the scenes that Olivia and Zach did. And Olivia mm -hmm. right now, she's got an iPad because she's actually drawing the assets that you're seeing right in front of us. So that behind the scenes came from Olivia's drawing on the iPad and now she's using it, or Zach's using it as an asset on the video, which I think is so cool. Yeah, it's super fun. We love love drawing with the Apple Pencil. You can get some really cool, really cool things out of Adobe Sketch with that. That's awesome. Well, Rad, I want to say hey to some people in the chat that have joined us. Lena's here now. Welcome, welcome, Tim, my good friend Tim. How are you doing? Welcome, my friend. Okay, so as you can see, these four clips we already kind of had ready. They're already cut down just exactly how we want them. So if we'll listen through that, Again, the audio might be a little quiet in Premiere because it's kind of a slow song. But we'll just see, okay, this looks good. Yeah, that feels right for this, for this section. Okay, so that's kind of our intro into the shoot. And then now we'll hop in to, we'll cut just the first section of the behind the scenes of the first photo. And then we'll jump and I'll show you once everything's cut together, what it looks like. So these clips, you can kind of see, they're not very pretty. This one's a little bit lower quality because it's just, you know, it's an iPhone. It's nothing fantastic. So at the very end, we'll kind of put some fun filters on those. So that's something to look forward to. But for now, we'll, we're just going to move on and get this cut first. So here's the first section of photos that we cut through earlier. So let's drag this in and kind of get into the meat of what we're editing. So we're trying to tell the story of me taking the photos of Olivia, and then we're going to show what those photos look like. So let's 
let's just listen through. It's truly like a day in the life for us. (laughs) Yeah. We're seeing it right here. Okay. Authentic behind the scenes. Like that part where I'm getting a different photo there, so we'll cut to that. And again, the way that I did that is I just use the C key, and that brings up this cutter, and it just snaps right to wherever my playhead is. So you can cut up the clips however you want, and then V takes you back to the regular selection tool. So I'm just going to delete all those clips. And that's looking pretty good. And then let's cut in our viewfinder here. So that's maybe good for one of the photos. And we'll kind of go a little further in the end where I'm getting these this cool like lower angle. These are my favorite ones. Yes. Okay, let's put that there. All right, so that feels pretty well paced. So let's kind of just walk through that. All right, so one thing to note too that we're gonna do right here is these two clips are supposed to be like us looking through the viewfinder. So I know that later on in the project, once I have this cut, I'm going to put effects on those. So I'm going to use After Effects to replace these comps and make it look like we're looking through a viewfinder. So I'm just going to drag these two clips up above that adjustment layer, just like we did with these other ones, so that I know, hey, these need more work later on. They don't, they're not good to go. They just, they're cut where they're supposed to be. They aren't colored yet. All right, so that's kind of like how I would work my way through cutting this. And I, again, don't want to bore you with cutting the whole thing together. <laughs> so... We'll just jump right into another one that I already have done. So sequences. Again, like we were talking about. Say again. So we're time warping. We're jumping. Exactly. (laughs) So you can kind of see these are all the different like sections of the video that we've made or all the different kind of like phases of the video. So organization is super important. I keep everything under sequences so that I know this is where everything is. And I label it really clearly. So this AF is the photo shoot, so it's the main sequence, and this is when it's cut, this is once I've got effects on it, this is the final product. So right now, we're just going to go with cut, because we just finished with trimmed footage, as you can see here. This is, this is what we a just template did. that you carry on to any video that you're doing, Zach, or is it just specific to this one? No, I do like to keep everything very consistent, especially that way, like, if for some reason I'm, like, through the end of my project and I see, oh shoot, like I need a clip that I accidentally deleted or I didn't like something I did earlier on and need to revert back to a step. You've always kind of got these like different phases of where the video was at so that you can see kind of the thought process and go back and change something or get something new if you need it. Okay, so now this is gonna kind of be the fun part where we jump over to Olivia's screen because she's got the photos, which are the final product of this shoot that we had. So as you can see, I cut in or I put in these red, just like full color mats because I know I'm going to replace this with photos later on. So we've got it cut. Placeholders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause that way Very I know the pacing. The yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to replace this now. So if we want to jump to Olivia's screen, cool. uh, she's going to do that. kind of show you how she edits all the different photos that she's got from this shoot. And then we'll show you how so to cut Olivia, them back in. Go ahead and start sharing your screen. And then as soon as I have our screen feed, Zach, you can stop sharing. Cool. And then we'll hop on to Olivia's screen. Awesome. In the meantime, chat, what's going on? Let us know what you're thinking of the edit so far. If you have any questions that deal with video or photo, now is the time to ask both Olivia and Zach while we have them here. Or just let us know how you're liking the edit. Do you have any questions, any comments and concerns? Go ahead and engage with us. Let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. So before I start, Zach, I just finished my camera drawing. Um, okay. Can I airdrop it to you? It says you're not showing up, but if maybe we're too far away, if not, I can try uh, just messaging it to you. Yeah. Go I don't ahead. know where. Um, it's not showing up in airdrop, so I'll just try messaging it to you. Um, I'm thinking it could go in the where it says like behind the scenes, like the sequence that you yeah. just like animated. Um, and you know, I have that other one that says like of a photo shoot, 
Yeah. So probably like that. And then the next thing, like of a photo shoot. And then like, just like this little, little camera. camera drawing. Cool. Be cute. Yeah, we can, we'll, we'll jump back to that. Towards cool. We have a question from Zainab. Uh, the plain footage shot with the iPhone looks almost the same as the other footage with the color adjustment. How do you manage that? Is there a certain way to do it or is it just your eye? Totally. I think when it comes down to it, it is just our eye. There is a built-in matching with Lumetri, I believe. Uh, I've used it a few times and it works pretty well, but I always like to just kind of do it myself and eye it. And we'll, again, we'll jump into that. That'll kind of be the last thing we cover is how to color it and like master the video. Yeah. And I think that that'll, that'll help answer a lot of questions because that's definitely the most complicated and also the most judgment based piece. Oh man, you can spend hours just tinkering. <laughs> Usually I do. So. The blue. We all do. Uh, but I will say Zainab, just kind of what Zach did at the beginning is he took a rec 709 LUT and put it on that flat footage. And I would say just iPhone cameras off the bat already have a baked in preset that make it look nice. Like it's well color adjusted. So I would say it's like a version of Rec. 709. It just already looks great off the phone. So when Zach slapped that on there, then they're kind of like being standardized, so to say. But then of course, yeah. after that, you start adding your color grading to give it that look that you want. But that's all stuff we'll, de uh, we'll delve into a little bit further afterwards. <laughs> okay, cool. so-, so now we're on Olivia's screen. So she's gonna do the photography portion of this stream. And we're now on Lightroom, Lightroom Classic. Yes, I am a Lightroom gal. I use it every single day, whether it's Lightroom Classic on the desktop or Lightroom Mobile, which I use multiple times a day. So Lightroom is my thing. And so for this in particular, I really wanted to do like a video where we're showing us taking photos and then just inserting what those photos looked like. I just, I've seen a lot of videos like that myself from photographers. And I think it's really cool just so you can really like understand like, oh, okay, so they were doing that to get that angle. And then, oh, that's what the final product looks like. So that's kind of what, that was the idea for the video. And just like a really brief, I'll just like talk you through my process of getting to this point because I certainly did not want to bore you with it. But essentially once we shoot, I just, open up Adobe Bridge and that is how I cull through all my photos because it just handles the raw files really well and I'll just go and just select all the photos I want from Bridge and copy them over to my hard drive and then once I have them in my hard drive that's when I open up Lightroom and that's what you're seeing here. So out of all the photos we took there were 20 what is this 23 23 photos that I really liked and so brought those over into Lightroom. So these and are the selects right? Yes, these are the selects. I was we took say, you only shot probably. <laughs> I was like, you guys are so confident with your shooting. That's amazing. <laughs> no, no, no. We probably like shot like a hundred or so. Yeah. So we didn't shoot a ton. Um, but we probably shot a hundred or so. And then these were the ones that I liked the best. So awesome. I'm still gonna cull down from here even more, but I like to do that first round of culling before I actually import them onto my hard drive. And then I do my second round of culling in Lightroom. So here are just like the very like raw photos that you're seeing here. And when I'm going through them, I will just rate them in accordance to how much I like them. So I'll rate this one a five. I really like it. This one. So speaking of shortcuts, yeah. Olivia, what are you hitting to rate that? So all our viewers know. Yeah, I'm literally hitting the number five on the keyboard to rate it to five. I rate them one through five and that kind of gives them a certain um, it gives them like a star rating. You can see down here in the very left hand corner. So I'll go through this. This one I like not as much. I'll rate it a four. So sometimes once I see all my selects, if I'm like, eh, I probably should have a few more. I'll go back through the fours and see if there's any I like and whatnot. Um, I'll probably give that one a four. I'll give this one a five. And yeah, I pretty much just go through here and I start rating my photos. I'm literally just going back and forth between the four and the five number on my keyboard to see what I like, what I don't like. It's probably, I feel like it's really cool just seeing like all the video that Zach was just sharing. And this is like seeing actually what the photos looked like that he was taking. I think it's Sean pretty Sean is saying, exciting. I give this one a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. A Thank you. Thank you. That's a really 
That's a really great one too. You have so yeah, many we're gonna ones. rate it five. And granted, I've already culled through all the random ones, you know, where my oh. eyes were closed <laughs> or stuff like that, just because it, it can be a boring process. And I like to do it very, very quickly. Like, I don't even like to think about it. I'm just like, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> just so I don't yeah. dwell on it uh, too much. I'll go back and this forth. This is definitely the harder five. part when you have your selects and then you want to make another round on your selects. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, they're all so great. And I yeah. think one thing to add in here too is a lot of these photos look super great out of the camera and that just goes back to just having a good location but also shooting at the right time of day which is something we didn't talk about. If you're shooting at like high noon and the shadows are just like straight from the top down it's not going to look as good. No boy, so no. we shot at like I think 5 p.m. and the sun sets you know, like maybe three hours later here so like around 8 p.m. So that later in the day or earlier in the morning works just as well. When the sun is lower, longer shadows, warmer light, it just really makes everything look super, super good out of the camera. And I that yeah. can totally make or break a shoot. That's a great call out, Zach. Um, that's traditionally known in the Hollywood industry as golden hour. Mm -hmm. So anytime yes. you have that sun coming down, and I, I think we were seeing your photos timestamped, but yeah, it looked around 5.30, 6 ish. Yep. And that light is yeah. very, very pleasing. I mean, way yeah, five, better 16. to shoot than like <laughs> it right above you. I mean, this is, yeah, this is a beautiful time mm -hmm. and location. Definitely. Uh, we have Sean saying, is this Oregon, Colorado? Great location. This is in the Columbia River Gorge in Oregon. So it's about an hour outside of Portland. Yeah, it's literally, it's right on the border with Oregon and Washington. This one's technically on the Washington side. True, but, I guess we technically I mean, were in Washington. <laughs> It's just so indistinguishable here. They're literally the same thing, basically. We were essentially kind of on this like little island part that's like in the middle between the two states. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay. So once I have my like ratings, I'll come down here to the bottom and I will go to filters and click rated. So now I can click and go through which ones I have. Okay. These are all my fours and then these are all my fives. The fives were my favorite ones. So that's what I'm going to actually start developing. And if I need more, I can go back through the fours and then all the ones that are unrated. Um, well, you can't see them because <laughs> I didn't rate them. <laughs> so we'll just go into develop here. And this is how kind of how I'll start. I usually will pick a photo with the most like even lighting since this was all shot um, in the same location. Uh, the colors are all going to be pretty consistent, but I would say like this photo probably has like the most like, even lighting. Nothing's like too overexposed or underexposed. So I'll kind of build the like preset for this photo or for this like series off of this photo and then adjust it for the other photos. Well, so just to clarify something, yeah. Juan is asking, why is the iPhone used for this? Um, it's actually not, this wasn't shot on the iPhone. This was shot with their Fuji X-T3. Yes. Mm -hmm. The iPhone, we just used to capture some behind the scenes photos and videos of us actually like shooting with the camera. Mm -hmm. But no, this was definitely not shot on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this would be so... a crazy app for the iPhone. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> someday. Shot off of it. Definitely. I'm sure we're not too far behind. <laughs> So over here, I have kind of like my presets that I mainly use for my photos and they're not like, they don't look great on every photo. So I have to do a lot of adjusting, but I'm just gonna click this preset that I've made. Obviously does not look great right now, but these are kind of the base like colors that I like to work with in my photos. You can see here in the HSL panel that all of my colors are kind of like, they're already set to what I like for my own like tones and whatnot and my curves are already set as well so because i already have my like base preset on this i really just have to go and adjust you know the, the basic things to get the photo looking looking good so obviously it's a bit overexposed so i'm just gonna bring that exposure down here probably going to drag the highlight just all the way down because it's a pretty it was a backlit shot so it's pretty bright and my shadows, I'm gonna raise them just a little bit. I might mess around with the whites here. Pretty much, I mean, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know with editing photos, it's just a lot of like sliding things back and forth, seeing what looks cool. I might take the whites and just 
clip them down even a little bit more because it's kind of bright. Um, and also something I love doing when I'm editing is frequently looking at my before and after. I do that with just pressing the little, uh, I don't even know what it's called. The it's, little I know. I'm always forward hesitant slash to saying. I think it's like the forward slash or yeah. backslash. But it's the <laughs> forward slash. I think that's what for, it's called. Yeah, I think it is forward slash. But that, that's shots. a great tip. I use it all the time. It's just, it's great to see the before and after and where you're coming from. Yeah. And Olivia also touched up on a great, great point. Um, if you're not familiar with Lightroom or just any of these apps, one of the best ways to kind of get a feel of what everything does is just tinkering around and messing with things, right? Mm -hmm. um, the beautiful is, is anything is reversible. These aren't adjustments oh, yeah. that are gonna be permanent. So just feel free to mess around with those sliders, see what looks for you. And once you start tinkering around enough with those sliders, you start to develop a look that you like. And uh, Olivia's got a very signature look. And it's, you know, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I like to keep all my photos very warm, a little bit kind of nostalgic feeling. Yeah. Um, and so again, that's kind of what like my base preset does. It kind of tones down the greens and the blues and it really brings out the oranges and the yellows. And if I look at my before here, I can see the yellow was actually a lot brighter and I've kind of muted it a little bit with my preset. So I'm going to kind of like bring a bit of that back in because I really like the pretty yellows here. And already, and you said yeah. you did add a preset to this at the beginning before you started messing yes. with the adjustments, right? Okay. Was this a preset that you made or was this a predefined preset? Yeah. So I make all of my presets. It's truly one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> Sometimes I just make them for fun. Uh, I make a lot of presets that work for Lightroom Mobile, that work for like JPEG iPhone photos, and I actually sell those on my website. So. That's really fun. And I've made some in partnership with Adobe as well before, which have been super I love cool. It. So mods, go ahead and put in a link um, to her website that has those presets. So we can draw some attention to that. But well, thank you. They're beautiful. very fun. I'm coming out with a set of fall warm inspired presets in the next couple of weeks, which will be very exciting because I mean, who doesn't like taking photos of fall leaves? It's just the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty. But as of now, these are just kind of like my desktop presets that I work with. And mm -hmm. to just show you guys a little bit in depth of like what they look like, it's nothing crazy. Like, well, I'm going to bring up the green on this photo. Just why not? <laughs> um, but my presets, I have like my lens corrections in here for the Fuji. And then mainly what like I feel like defines one's personal editing style is all in the like split toning, tone curves, and then everything in the HSL. Like these three panels right here are pretty much like how I define a specific look. Mm -hmm. So might even like bring the shadows up in my split toning a little bit. I know it's kind of hard to tell because they're very subtle increments, but if I like made this slider go all the way up, you could tell my yeah. shadows are yellow. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> reverse that there. Um, but yeah, so as of now, I think I like this photo. I might go in and use the custom brush tool to bring up some of the shadows in my hair. I don't know why, but my hair, it just like, <laughs> it just, the darkness, it just like loves it. It just, you can even see that right now. It looks like a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I just have to go in and like, brighten it up a little bit yeah. make the curls pop a little bit more <laughs> make them pop <laughs> yeah and you can obviously see when i'm zoomed in here like the photo is pretty grainy because that's just that's how i like it obviously if i'm yeah, doing like look. like a client work i'll make it a little cleaner but if this is just something fun like for instagram and youtube i'll just have fun with it because that's my look so cool. um, val already yeah. put your website on the chat so it's oliviafields.co thanks for posting that chat Perfect. you're awesome um, she says, oh my God, this website is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So yeah, I've got this photo here. I feel pretty good about it. Again, we can look at the before and after. It just kind of like softens it up really with my preset and makes it a little bit more me. So now going on to the rest of the photos, I'll just command C and I'll copy the settings so I can paste them onto the other photos. And something to just be sure when you're copying is make sure you're not copying things like like the crop or the brushes or the transformation, stuff like that. You just kind of want to be co copying like the color, all the effects, the basic tones, the curves and whatnot. So it just kind of copies the, the color profile. And 
Let me put it onto a photo that looks a little bit different and see what it looks like. So it looks okay, but I'm gonna edit it. The sky is a bit too blue for my liking. I'm notorious for hating the color blue in my photos and just like removing it at all costs because I just love warm tones so much. <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite of the warm tones that we see <laughs> across your work. Uh, so just a quick time check. We have about 45 minutes left, so just a heads up. Sweet. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty much just gonna work with these uh, these two photos here because these are kind of the two that are pretty uh, like different. The other one was backlit and this one shot in like direct sunlight. So I have to do a little bit more uh, like a little bit more work to this one just to, to make it good. Again, I have to. In the meantime, to... Paloma says that she loves your hair. <laughs> Thank you. I love it too, except for when it looks like just a pit of darkness in my photos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring up the shadows there a little bit. Cool. So that's that's pretty much all I would do to this photo. I don't think there's any other photos that are like quite different. Um, that one's one of my favorites, but yeah, I'll edit one more photo, see what the preset looks like on this yeah. one. Yeah, plenty of time. Yeah, so this again was shot in like direct light. So this looks a bit like dark. It doesn't look very soft and, and pretty like I like my photos to look. So I'm kind of just gonna brighten this one back up again. Kind of raise those tone curves and the shadows. I'm gonna give this one some extra green because it's kind of like a cool, cool vibey photo. I'm gonna bring down the yellows because it's a bit yellow heavy. And I see a little bit of blue in the corner there. Gotta take that away. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna rotate this a little bit. Gotta have the straight lines. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. But yeah, Looking so like even horizon. <laughs> mm -hmm. always got to have the even horizon line. That's a big one. You, it, it's so subtle, but I mean, honestly, we're trained to just look at the horizon. The smallest cue, like skew, people are going to notice it. I'm, I'm also ADD about that. <laughs> Definitely. Even. Yeah. So now that I have these photos, um, I already pre-edited most of them before this. And so Zach already has them. But typically what I would do is just export these and then airdrop them to Zach as soon as I get them so he can uh, put them into his, uh, into the video. But for exporting, I keep it very, very simple. I have all of my like projects organized by- Ooh, Look at that naming convention by month. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. By month. And then this is kind of dorky of me, but I have all of my like client work in like all caps and then just like my, my for fun work in just like normal <laughs> case letters. <laughs> so I kind of know like, okay, what am yeah, I looking very for? Very visually you can distinguish that right off the bat. Yeah, so this is the Adobe Live project. I keep it all in just like a JPEGs folder. And then I keep all of my file names, Olivia Fields X, and then I'll just put in what it is, Adobe Live, and then start with one or whatever my, my number is. Just keep it JPEG file format unless we need something different like a PNG or a TIFF file. But other than that, I click export and we're good to go. And back to you, Zach. <laughs> awesome. Cool. So let me go to this shot. And then Zach, go ahead and start sharing your screen. And then Should Olivia can stop sharing as soon as Zach. And she's way ahead cool. of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're on Zach's screen and then Olivia cool. can stop sharing. Cool. All right, so just to kind of give you a preview of what we're going for now, this is kind of the outline of what we're gonna create on how we're gonna show the photos in our project. So like Olivia said, she already sent me the photos. So we're gonna start this out in After Effects. So we're basically just gonna take this, these few seconds and display the photos. So let's hop into After Effects and I'm gonna bring in all of my photos from Finder. So, so we have, uh, I'm thinking Zombie Army was referencing your, your hair. He goes, a pit of darkness, just like my soul Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, awesome. And then Val is saying, wow, so organized. Yeah, I mean, you two are just on point with your organizational skills. And Thank I mean, you. Again, I that's, feel like... That's really, it really <laughs> goes far when you start to get all sorts of clients, all sorts of uh, mm -hmm. content. It's just, it's, it's a big one, I think. Oh, yeah. I feel like it was uh, quite the shock when we first met each other. 
back before we were married, way back in the day, and realizing that we were both like pretty proficient in keeping like files organized, I was like, wow, <laughs> that that's a personality trait that's to look for yeah, that's in a potential right. partner. A <laughs> Knows how to organize yeah. those files. <laughs> zombie arm is zombie army is saying, I need that level of organization in my life. You should ask yourself, what would Olivia do? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so we're gonna start in After Effects again. We're gonna create a new composition. Same sort of deal. We'll just keep it 10 seconds, 4K, 24 frames per second. And we'll just call this finished photos 01. Actually, what I like to do is 1.1 because we have basically a set of photos for each of the different like locations that we shot at. So I think we have four or five for this first set. So we'll start with 1.1. I'll make my folder again. I'll call it finished photos compositions. And we'll put that in here. That way we keep it all nice and organized. And let's go ahead and drag in that same background we used just to keep it consistent. So this is what the background of our shot is going to look like. Where did that then, background come from, Zach? Did you make that yeah. or is that stuck? Uh, Olivia drew it in Adobe Sketch. So it's the same one that we used for our title card. Mm. Uh, I think it was just kind of like some watercolor brush yeah, strokes. Yeah, it's super simple. Just pick any mm. color, watercolor brush. And it just it's, it's cooler than just like a plain, like solid color. 100% uh, agree. Photo. Just gives it a little little something. Uh, Sean right. says, before I married my wife, she had over 5K unread emails. Nope, that's, that's going to be a no for me. That gives me anxiety. <laughs> I have to get to inbox zero at the end of every day or else like I can't sleep at night. <laughs> I'm the same way. My my little email icon has to say two or under emails. Like I, can't I respect that. that. <laughs> All right, so we've dragged the photo in. And as you noticed, when it came in at 100% scale, photos are way higher resolution than video. So you can see it's kind of all cropped in here. We obviously don't want that. So we're gonna scale it down to 35%. That looks about like what we're going for. And then we're gonna create a new shape layer here because we want to get that outline kind of look that I was showing you. So we'll just kind of go here and drag this over. So this tool is the shape tool. So you can pick whatever shape you want up here. I'm doing rectangle. Uh, and then there's no fill because I want the middle to be empty. So if you have a color there, if you click on fill, it'll give you the option to get rid of that. And then our stroke color, which is the outline is white. So just super simple. You can change how like thick you want it to be. 25 pixels look pretty good to me. So now we've got our outline and I'm OCD about that too. So I always go down and make sure that it's perfectly centered. So I open the transform control and just zero those two out so that it's perfectly centered with our clip. And then we're gonna pre-compose it. And I'll show you why we're gonna do that in a minute. But what a pre-composition does is it basically gives you a new composition with just that asset in it or whatever assets you have picked. So we'll pre-compose it and we'll call it vertical or actually horizontal frame. And then we'll double click this to open it. And again, you can see it put that horizontal frame here. So I'm just going to pull that out because that's something that's going to get reused. And now we have a composition with just our frame in it. And the reason we do this is because I want this to kind of play back at a choppy pace. I don't want it to be a nice flowy playback. So we're going to go to our composition settings for this composition and we're going to change the frame rate and drop it down to eight. And what this this will do is it'll just kind of, you know, make the effect that we're going to put on this kind of more of like a choppy run through. But the most important thing that I've learned that you have to do is you have to go to advance and click preserve this frame rate because otherwise After Effects is smart enough to know that if this frame rate of this comp is 24 frames per second, it'll override the eight that we just set here. So that's definitely that's a a, something that can trip you up if you don't do that. And real quick again, Zach, why did you change this frame rate to A frames per second? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. So I'm going to throw this effect on it called Turbulent Displace, which kind of just makes it a little warped like that. And if I make some quick keyframes, I want it to be choppy. So that's why I went to eight frames. See how it kind of like wiggles through there instead of playing back at a nice, smooth pace, yeah. just because it kind of gives like a neat little like effect, which will play a lot into our video that we're going to show you guys how we make tomorrow, which will be super fun, kind of a stop motion sort of vibe. So definitely stay tuned for that. I guess we like everything to look very like imperfect, kind of like old yeah. school, kind of choppy. It's an awesome so style. 
I'm using the turbulent displace effect here, which is one of my favorites, mainly just because it has a really cool name. <laughs> um, but what turbulent displace does is it kind of makes this like warping effect on the frame, as you can see. So there's a couple of different types of displacement that you can do and just kind of pick whatever looks best for your style. I'm going to keep it on turbulent. I'm going to turn the amount down a little bit, maybe down to like 35 and the size looks fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to animate this evolution tool. So basically what evolution does is it just kind of makes it move, if that makes sense. So you start at zero, as you can see right here, and then you just drop a keyframe at the very end and you can make it, you know, whatever you want it to be. So I just made it go eight times. We'll see if that looks good for speed. See how it's kind of like, it almost looks like it's dropping frames, but that's the look we're going for. Right. So that's why I did that. And the reason again for the pre-composition is because I want the frame rates to be different. You can't change the frame rate as far as I know of something in within its own composition. So that's the reason for that. And we're gonna reuse this. We're gonna use this pre-comp in all of the photos. So instead of doing it each time, we can just drag that in and we're just ready to go. Okay, awesome. so we have some pretty uh, witty chat comments. Aaron Hunter goes pre comp. It's the smart object of After Effects. And yeah. Then Zombie Army goes eight 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 frames per second, <laughs> like it's chopped. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. That's gonna be the motto of our videos now. <laughs> Drop it like it's chopped. So now you can kind of see how that outline looks in this finished composition. So I actually think I want that photo to be scaled down just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go like thirty four percent on the scale. That looks a bit better. You don't want to see me on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> and so that looks great. So now let's go ahead and take this title card and let's see, finish photo comps. And again, we're just going to drag that right into Premiere. And I'm going to make another folder, which is Command B. They're called bins in Premiere. So I'm going to call this finished photo comps. And I will go ahead and drag this guy into it okay so here's our first one so cool so we'll drag this in here again on top of the adjustment layer because we don't want anything any of that coloring to translate over because these are already pretty and colored and edited and then now i'm going to go back and work on the next one so we'll do a handful of these and then we'll hop on to the next thing so again it's not too boring so i'm just going to duplicate this and it's already sequences the numbers for me so 1.2 that's exactly what i want and I'll drag the next photo in, delete the old one and set the scale down again. I think 34% is where we're at. Maybe we'll do 35 on that one. It's a little bit more cropped. Watch it through, maybe even 36%. Okay, that That's looks perfect. pretty good. Drag this one into Premiere. Maybe do like a vertical one, babe. Yeah, I will. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find the vertical one. So this photo is actually from the second shoot. So we'll create a duplicate here and we'll call this 2.1 because this is the first photo from that like second set of location like photos that we did. So we'll open this up, drag a vertical one in. And obviously you'll be able to see here when we, when we scale this one down that the frame doesn't work. We could simply just take this and rotate it, but that doesn't always, you know, translate quite as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and make another one just like we did. So we'll do a new shape, drag that pretty much just perfectly there. And then we'll go ahead and pre-compose it again. Set our comp settings eight frames per second. And we, we played around with this a few different times. That's how we landed on eight. That's not just a lucky guess. Six <laughs> was a little too choppy for us. Eight just seemed to be a nice, a nice little area. So we'll do that. Oh, actually I just changed the wrong sequence. I need to change the frame of this one. Preserve eight frames. And we'll call this vertical frame. And then it's pretty easy since these are going to be the same duration. You can go into your effects that we already made and just copy this over to the vertical one. And it's going to put it exactly the same. It'll copy the keyframes and everything over. So let me just make sure that I have this set right. And now we've got our vertical frame. So again, maybe scale this down another percent to 27%. Okay. 
And now we'll go ahead and drag this one into Premiere. Cool. So now we've got these three compositions from After Effects and we're basically just gonna stack them and present them all. So we've got these three right here like this in our sequence and we wanna show them one at a time. So we've got what, like five seconds of footage, I think. So let's go ahead and just type our number in here. Again, you can do this however you want. You can be precise or non-precise. I'm just gonna kind of like trim this duration a little bit like this. And you'll see now these just kind of like show up one after the other in the composition or in the timeline. It. It's looking rather. so good. A little yeah. squiggly line really adds a whole nother element to that. Right? You know, it's those yeah. little things. It's the little and that's things in definitely something of creative direction we get from Olivia. She definitely has all the fun ideas, sends me inspiration photos and says, can you make this? And then I <laughs> figure out how to make it because I'm definitely not as creatively gifted as she is in that realm. So let's take a look at this. Cool. That looks really good. So now we can kind of look at that whole little sequence that we just made right here. So this is again the first location. Go now. Through the viewfinder, which is what we're going to work on next. I'm going to show you how to make these look really cool. Yeah, it seems like, yeah. I don't know why it just like slowly it starts keeps, fading down. There, there's probably a setting that's like automatically adjusting it, I think with your volume and oh, premiere. Gotcha. Thank you for calling that out. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, so we should be good now. It looks like it's, it's doing pretty well. Okay, yeah. so that looks great. So now we're gonna kind of work back in another way that you can integrate Premiere and After Effects. And the, with these last comps, we started them in After Effects and then we dragged them into Premiere. But if you have something already cut, a really cool feature is if you right click on a clip, you can replace it with an After Effects composition. Yeah. And it's just gonna bring it all in and ready for you. So it already links everything. It has your sequence for your composition all set up, your footage in there trimmed exactly how you want it. Super handy. Uh, so we have a question from the chat. Yeah. So when you were stacking the frame photos in Premiere Pro, Sean is asking why stack instead of leave on the same layer? It's all about personal preference. You can totally do that. I just like seeing how something progresses. So yeah, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Either one of those would work just fine. Yeah, that's a great answer. It's, it's, it really comes down to personal preference. Again, there's so many ways to do things in these apps. I think workflows are pretty arbitrary, just whatever you think works best for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely put them all in the same layer <laughs> to keep it minimal and clean, but yeah. that's just me. <laughs> Totally. I do the same too. I think it might be a habit from After Effects since it's got those layer ordering yeah. too. Yeah. That probably is it. Cause I definitely did After Effects. That, that was the first Adobe application I learned. And then Ooh, I moved to Premiere. Look at you. It's usually <laughs> the opposite. You'll start with Premiere and you're like, I need more. And then right. After well, it was back in the day, back when people used like Final Cut Pro 7. So that was the first like video editing software I ever used. And then I was like, oh, well, I need After Effects, of course, cause I'm going to make cool stuff. And this was probably like 10 years ago. <laughs> and then, you know, the whole creative cloud suite kind of became a thing and everybody moved to that. So that's that's why After Effects is what I had first back when back way back in the day. But now it's awesome. all all premiere. OK, so we've got our clip in here and we can start editing. So I've already made some cool film templates is what I've called them. So I'm going to just import my template project into here. Super easy and it's really effective. So let's go to my After Effects templates and my film templates right here. So I'm gonna import this and you'll see it kind of shows up here as a folder and then it literally looks like, just like you're looking at the whole project. So we'll kind of break this down of how we created this. So we're gonna do a viewfinder template so this is just some placeholder footage in all of my layers. And I'll kind of break it down for you and then I'll show you how we're gonna add the footage into it. So it looks really hectic, <laughs> as it kind of is, <laughs> but it's pretty much just a bunch of like 3D layers to kind of create that like box look that you get with a 
film or a viewfinder on a camera. So let me see if I can find a reference photo that I based this off of. So this is the reference photo that Olivia sent me looking through the viewfinder on her camera, or I guess our camera. So I was like, okay, I want to recreate that. So the first thing that I did was I actually did it in Photoshop as I made this viewfinder outline. And the cool thing with Adobe products, again, is when you import that Photoshop file, it gives you each layer as its own sort of asset. And you can manipulate them, which I didn't do on this, but you could, super, super handy. I, all I did was just overlay it on this clip. So that's the viewfinder outline right there. And then we've got our footage layer, which is behind it. So again, we layer the footage. And that's just the super basic, like nothing fancy look of what we're going for. So then I made, I wanted to get that kind of reflection look, which you can not really see here, but it's very subtle. You'll notice it when we play back the final composition of what the viewfinder reflection would look like on the side. So I duplicated and made four layers of this same video pre-comp, which again, I'll go into a bit more later. And then I just added a couple of lights to light it and give a nice dynamic effect. And then we've got the camera here as well. So the camera is what we're actually looking through in, in After Effects. It's basically like if you had a real camera moving through this 3D scene, it's exactly how you can think of it. So uh, this is where I use that wiggle um, expression. So I just moved the position and point of interest a little bit because I wanted it to kind of look like a handheld sort of vibe. So let's see if this will play back very well here. You have the wiggle expression on the point of interest and position properties. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. I've nice. got it on both those and only, it looks like I'm only doing it on X and Y cause I don't want it to move forward and backward. Right. So a little bit more advanced of a wiggle expression, but that's a, a question for another day. <laughs> cause that is, this took me probably like eight hours to make. It was a, a lot of work to get it looking just impressive. how we wanted it. I was going to say, yeah, this is, um, I thought you just grabbed the template for this, but then you mentioned you had a reference photo and made it in Photoshop. So yeah, this is, this is yeah, pretty I was cool. Like, it's, it's more fun to make everything yourself. Like you can always buy templates and they get the job done, but if you got the time, it's really fun to just mess yeah. around with and it. And that's the best way to learn too. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say is trying to recreate something too on your own. Then you kind of dive into more things in the program that you otherwise may not touch. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a great learning experience just to try and recreate things on your own. Absolutely. So there's kind of like a little bit more rendered version. You can kind of see mm -hmm. on the walls of this pseudo viewfinder, you can see a little bit of reflection, but I have a lot of mm -hmm. effects and like noise and grain on this to kind of make it look more blurry. And I also used, uh, I believe, fast blur or directional blur on it. So yeah, again, just a lot of little effect things that we don't really need to dive into today, but just so you understand where this came from. We will make some cool, more simple templates at the end. Okay, so that's how we made our viewfinder. So now let's go back to here. So this is where we wanna make it look like it's in that viewfinder. So I'm going to open the template up and basically just copy everything over to here. And then make this footage, this footage piece is what I want. So we're gonna replace all of these five pieces that say viewfinder. And again, I could do it in the pre-comp, but I'm just gonna do it this way just for, just to kind of show you a bit more. So I'm just copying all of the settings from this particular, from each of these items onto this footage. That way it links properly. That's why I didn't end up, why I didn't initially do everything in the pre-comp because it wasn't linked into Premiere. I would have had to drag and drop, which works just as well. Again, it's all about what workflow you want to do. So we'll do this, duplicate one more. So we have all four sides. Cool. And so now we've got a pretty convincing looking version here. Nice. With that nice film grain. So it looks like we're looking through the viewfinder of this footage. That <laughs> it looks shot. like we screen recorded from our camera. <laughs> Exactly. And that's exactly what we wanted it to look like. Cool. Okay. So now we've got this and I will pop back to Premiere and you can see, oh, I think I need to save it first. Yeah. And now you can see in Premiere, it automatically updated exactly what we did in After Effects and it's showing us our Premiere project. 
it out. Live so pretty VFX. Cool. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it's VFX really definitely add a lot to a project. And that was something we really wanted to hit hard with this because a lot of the times our videos are more just like travel and lifestyle. So we're not really doing a lot of effects. It's just kind of like a vlog. But it's really fun to have these creative videos. I agree. I mean, they definitely can be some of the most time consuming parts of videos, is <laughs> all those little motion graphics and VFX. But I mean, that's really what kind of separates like a pro video from sort of like an amateur looking one. It's it really can Absolutely. increase that production value. And we've had lots of time staying at home to work on these right now. So it's definitely a great time to, <laughs> to be creative. Yeah. All right. So kind of the last piece of this, we've got it all cut. We, we really wanted a cool way once we were done with the video to reveal all the photos that we took from the shoot. So I told Olivia since, you know, her main platform is Instagram. Why don't you create some Instagram stories in a way that you would normally like do that and then screen record it so she did that for me and we imported the screen recording of her what her instagram stories would look like to display all of these photos and that's how we're going to kind of end the video and kind of wrap up the story arc so those turned out pretty awesome as well and then again we're going to take these into after effects because these look great but they could use just a little bit more work so I'm going to select all three of these clips because you can do more than just one if you want. And I'm going to right click and replace with an After Effects composition. Okay. So that looks good. And one thing that I kind of want to get rid of on here is all of this stuff at the top because it's ugly and this little button at the bottom. So it's super simple. We're going to do a mask, which is the same tool as the shape tool. But if you have a layer selected, it'll mask it instead of uh, instead of creating a shape. So you can see, there we go. We'll cut out the bottom and then we'll go in and we'll just kind of, yeah, that works. Cool. So that looks pretty good, but again, we need a background. So I'm going to use that same background just to keep a consistent look throughout the video. Actually, let's do something a little more fun. I think it would be cool to kind of take one of our footage clips that we had that we really liked in Premiere. So maybe this opening clip right here. I think this could look really pretty as a background if we put maybe some sort of like fast blur on it. So let's find this file in Finder and we'll bring it into After Effects. So it's just the very first clip that we shot. Drag it into our project and put it here. So see that, that's kind of a nice presentation of this. But I don't want that background video to be what's drawing our eye. So let's go ahead and put some noise on it. Because we love our noise. Yeah, love our noise and film grain. Uh, you'll kind of see this in uh, when people are uploading like vertical content into a widescreen format. You'll exactly. kind of see this method on there. It's just to kind of give it a more consistent backdrop with the content in front of you. So you mm -hmm. just add it behind and like add a blur and it really does kind of, again, it's all those little things that just make it a little more appealing than just a normal background. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a fast box blur on here, which is just a straightforward, like standard blur. And I'm going to make sure it says repeat edge pixels because you can see it's kind of gray yeah. around the edge. So there you go. And then we'll put again our like 5% of noise. And this is looking pretty good, but it's still kind of drawing the eye. So I'm going to go and just take the opacity down to like, Oh, not 5%, <laughs> maybe like 50% just to kind of, you know, give it a little less of a draw and maybe 65 looks a bit better. So now our focus is this Instagram story frame, right? But I still think it needs one more thing. So to kind of tie it in with the rest of the look of the film, I'm going to put one of these frames around it. So I'm just going to come back in here and I'm going to grab our frame. I'm just going to search for it. Okay, vertical frame. Here we go. So I'll drag that vertical frame on top. And it looks pretty close. But instead of making a new one, you can just come and like change the scale to make it look a little bit better. Let's make it a little bit taller. Yeah, and a, a quick tip on what Zach did there is he got rid of the linking tool. And by getting yes. rid of that, then you can adjust the X and Y properties not linked to each other. So that's how he's able to make it narrower without making the Y properties also narrow. Mm -hmm. So now I think that this is looking pretty good. We can kind of watch through it. But this background video, 
it's the flat version of it. So like how we added the LUT in Premiere, we can do that in After Effects as well. So I'm just gonna search for LUT in my effects and apply color LUT. It's that easy, same deal. We just go and we pick that LUT and you'll see it just brings it and makes it a little bit more vibrant. No real color correcting otherwise, just that LUT. All right, I think that looks pretty nice. So let's pop back into Premiere and see how that looks. That flows much better with it. And again, it's probably gonna drop some frames here because it has a lot of effects on it. But it looks pretty cool, it gets the job done. We like the drop frame look though, so it's fine. True, <laughs> true. true. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a little technical tip for everybody. So the way that we're playing back video on Premiere and After Effects, it's actually not relaying, relaying the way that it does for Zach. Um, the way our screen share app does it, it's not given 30 frames per second. So the video is going to look a little choppy, but fear not because Zach uh, offline is actually going to send us a rendered video so I can play it off my system and you actually see this video playing back at its native frame rate. Yeah, that yeah. and we'll be uh, posting it on YouTube very soon. <laughs> true. So there you go. If you follow Olivia Fields in, in her channel, then you'll get to see it anyway. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that that's pretty good. We saw how we made the viewfinder look. So let's jump in to my final project. So this is where we ended last night. So all I've done here that's different is I've just gone through and, you know, made the viewfinder look for all of the different sequences so that we don't have to go through and do that all together. And it looks pretty good. So what we need to do now is color the video. That's always the biggest My favorite question. part. <laughs> yeah. Color grading. Yes. So there's so many different ways to attack color grading and color correction. The first thing that I like to do is I'm going to actually just for the sake of this video, I'm going to turn off the color for now. Uh, let's see. Because I already have Olivia's preset on there, but I'm going to show you guys how to create that preset. Because yeah. that's probably like the number one question we get asked with videos is like, how do you make your videos look like your photography presets? Like mm -hmm. everyone's like, I can't understand. How do you do this? <laughs> like, can you edit videos in Lightroom? I get that question all the time. No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's just start at the beginning. There's two different things. There's color correction and color grading. So color grading would be putting Olivia's filter on the video at the end, but color correction, at least in my book, is making all the clips look similar enough. So you can see these all look pretty close, like they don't look bad, but we wanna just make sure that they're all looking very like similar exposure, same sort of white balance, all that good stuff. So this one you can see, you know, the shadows are maybe a little low, so I'll come and like boost the shadows maybe a little bit. This one. Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Zach. I think this this question comes up a lot, and I think it can be sometimes misunderstood. But there are two different things, right? Color correction and color grading. Color correction is sort of standardizing all the footage, so it all sort of looks the same. It's consistent with the video. So mm -hmm. That's kind of making sure you like get at a standard level with your exposure, your lighting, all that. And then color grading is more the creative part of it, is where you give it that look. Like the orange and teal one is pretty mainstream. Uh, Olivia's mm -hmm. got her own look. That's the color grading process. So important to know to those two distinctions. So we'll just kind of get these just real close for the sake of today's video. So this one's maybe a little bright, so we'll maybe bring the highlights down just, just a little bit. I love how easy this is because even though like I don't do a ton of the video editing, I can do this portion of it pretty well because it's just like editing photo in Lightroom. So mm -hmm. if you're pretty proficient at editing photos, you can definitely color correct uh, videos too. Yeah, so see these two clips in particular, they were shot just back to back, but maybe the sun went behind a cloud or something. So the exposure is just ever so slightly different. So I'm going to bump this one up. Maybe, hope that's contrast. That's contrast. <laughs> maybe just a little bit. That's closer, maybe 0.5. Better. Yeah, see, so now those look darn near perfect. Yeah, they do. Again, this one's probably going to need 0.5 as well, which is just the kind of the unfortunate thing about shooting videos is the lighting conditions change, especially outside. So you just always have to be on your toes. If you're shooting a different way, the white balance may change. And like this clip, you know, this is probably a little bit too bright. So we'll bring it down just a little bit. 
matching a little bit better. I don't know where that transition came from. <laughs> And then I'm not going to touch these photos because these are very stylized effects that we're working with here. So there's not really any reason to make them match because they're their own thing. So we'll just kind of hop into the next section here. Maybe this one's really green. You can see a lot of green in the shadows. So maybe we'll just tint it a little bit. Just a time check, Zach. We have about yeah. 10 minutes left before we got to sign Perfect. up. look pretty good. Maybe we'll just make them a little bit brighter and then we'll get into how we actually create Olivia's look. People are going to start coming for my brand. <laughs> so yeah, these look pretty good now. They're close enough. Of course, like uh, Paco said earlier, you can spend hours color correcting. And one thing that I find a lot is when I'm color correcting, I'll go through and do my first pass and then I'll like step back and take a break, go grab dinner, go grab lunch, something to eat and then come back and look at it. And I'll find that I hate everything I did and think that it just doesn't look consistent at all. So definitely take that time to step back because when you're just looking at the screen for so long, you can really get lost in what you're doing. So taking that step that is, back and just that's having so eyes. crucial. I agree. You got to step away from your work at some point. I mean, if you've been staring at the same video or even if you find yourself just color correcting one single clip for like two hours, I mean, that's even extreme overkill. It's like, you yeah. gotta take a break and come back to it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like as much of a bummer as it is, you just have to uh, accept that some clips are just not going to look as good. So either cut them out or just roll with it. I know we've definitely had that issue, especially when we're traveling and it's not something that we can go and reshoot. Just making the best out of it and understanding that, you know, not everything's perfect, especially if it's going on YouTube. So yeah, we have a quick question, Zach. Yeah. Um, Chad is asking, how do you get the color corrections that you made not affect the quality of the exported video? I have noticed in some videos I've created that the corrections made the quality of the video drop. That's a good question. And I think that that kind of goes back to how you shoot the footage. Again, we're shooting with that Atomos Ninja like we were talking about. So we're getting that really, really high quality flat video versus a lot of times if you're shooting with like the iPhone clips, for example, that we showed in the beginning that look not great, you don't get as much color detail. So when you change something, it is a lot more harsh of an effect and you just naturally lose a lot of quality that way. So I think starting with the highest quality video in the beginning is truly the most important thing. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. It's a, you got to make sure you're shooting with a codec that gives you enough information. Um, Cause if you're, if you're working off like an H264 or like iPhone footage, it's already baked and compressed. So you can only take it so far before that quality starts to degrade on top of actually exporting it into another H264, then you'll start to see compression. Mm -hmm. yeah. And lighting is like so key. Like yeah, if absolutely. you're, you gotta be shooting in like some prime lighting to make sure you're not gonna have to do too much like back end work. Yeah. After yeah. That. You can always, you can't always bring up shadows and you can't always bring down highlights. So exposure as well is also very important. Yeah, we have the term fix it in post, which of course is never <laughs> the appropriate way to do it. I mean, yep. I'd say the more you practice getting it right on the field, or at least you try and get the majority of it right on the field, the way easier your life's going to be, mm -hmm. and the way easier it's going to be to actually edit and not have to worry about fixing things that could have been remedied on the actual shoot. Yeah, I know that's something I've always struggled with, like especially when we're in a rush Everybody like this does. shoot in particular. Yeah. Like, oh, we'll just fix it in post, but you, you, really <laughs> can't. you, you, yeah. you can well, to an extent, but we're not a multi-million dollar Hollywood studio. So <laughs> for sure, not quite as easy. All not right. Yet. So let, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about how we get Olivia's look onto this adjustment layer. Cause again, this adjustment layer is where we're doing all of our coloring for the grade, which is another good point that I should probably have stepped back and said, when you're correcting each clip, we're doing that on the clip. So it's important to have the clip that you want to change selected. So for instance, you can see our highlights change on this clip. And then the next clip, you know, exposure change. And then this adjustment layer affects everything the same. So this is where we're going to put her preset on it. So for me, it's super easy. I have a saved preset for Olivia that I just pop on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just walk through how we do that naturally. So it's very similar to Lightroom. We've got our basic corrections where we can change, you know, the highlights, the shadows, you know, maybe bring the shadows up, maybe bring the highlights a little bit down. She likes her shots bright, so maybe we'll make it a little bit brighter, warm it up a little, you know, all those basic effect correction things. 
and warm it up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this particular shot is a, blue. a little bit cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. So that's just the really basic stuff. Again, our LUT is right there. Uh, you can do kind of split toning here. So if you want maybe a little bit more orange in the shadows, which I definitely do. Olivia likes. <laughs> Honestly, she likes orange in the highlights too. So you can <laughs> mess with all that there. Give it a little faded film look if you want. Maybe bring that up to like 10. I always like to sharpen the video a little bit because video I feel like is inherently less sharp than photos. Definitely. And then curves. This is like the real meat. The bread color, and butter. <laughs> which is, again, this is probably something Olivia could do a little better than me because I actually have her come in to premiere and do all this to match exactly, you know, with her Lightroom open on the other screen. But we'll go through really quickly kind of just what we're thinking and she can get some input from the other room five she, points <laughs> yeah she likes to keep that a little bit lower bring and it then bring that one up a little up. bit the second one bring it down a little bit and then uh you can push that one up ever so slightly and uh, maybe a little less and then the very top one bring it down a little bit there you this go. is kind of your custom curve look that you go to. Yes. Right? This so, is... so this is this is great actually. This is probably answering that question of how do you keep your color so consistent? Yeah, you're, I you're do the same, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you're doing the same practices in Lightroom, especially with the curve tools also in Premiere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super handy because if you look at them side by side, pretty much everything that you can do in Lightroom, you can do in Premiere. With Lumetri. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same. The only real big difference I see is how you edit the hue and saturation and luminance. So, and it's very graphic in Premiere. So I always go through and just add all of my dots roughly where the sliders would be in Lightroom, just cause that's naturally like the first thing I learned to color correct in. And then just kind of, you know, match it to what the sliders would be. So we'll bump the oranges a little bit, bring down these like yellow green colors. Cause Olivia does not like green either, believe it or not. <laughs> bring those down. And you just kind of like make the graph look like what you want. A yeah, this, bit less this tool can be a little intimidating. It's kind of funky looking it's at it. It's fun. <laughs> but it's, once you know how to handle it, and I think that tip that you gave is just putting the points on it. It's, it's all about kind of isolating those control points with the colors and bringing mm -hmm. them up, up or down. Absolutely. That's, that's the bulk of it. Yeah, so I know for her, we for sure like lower and then kind of, you know, right. raise it up a little bit as it goes. Again, you can play with this for literally hours. But... That's probably my biggest tip too, is just like play around with this. When the Lumetri first came out, I played around with it for, I don't know, a whole day it seemed like, and just tried to match everything to like what the look is that we're going with. And of course, never, nothing ever translates perfectly to video, but it, it does pretty Kinda darn close. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we've gotten a lot better at it. Like when I look at back on our past YouTube videos, oh gosh, when we absolutely. first started like color grading, it, is not great <laughs> no. but it looks a lot better now and sometimes i'm just like wow that actually looks just like the photo like good job Oops, yeah that's, that's kind of the natural progression with still having some of your work up on your portfolio you know people are like mm -hmm. do you delete past work and no and I, I say no i mean it, it's it's awesome and beautiful to see the progression of where you started and where you are today it's almost very Absolutely. motivating too totally and it's really fun for your friends to come over and make fun of your videos you made in middle school <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so really hue and I, I'd say saturation is the primary place that we make corrections. We don't really change the hues too much because then you can kind of get some wonky colors. For instance, if you tilt tint blue to like green, well, I guess there's no blue in this shot. If you huh. make orange like purple, you can get some really funky like stylized things here, which definitely gives you more control than you would have in Lightroom, which is something that I like a lot. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, just kind of go and mess around with those a little bit. And that's pretty much how we do our color correcting and our color grading. Uh, and you add a lot of like grain and noise too. Yes. So. Yeah. Thank you for bringing, pointing that out. So that is the last thing that I do. And it always makes rendering take really long, but it's really <laughs> worth it. So going in the same plugin we use in After Effects, adding that noise to our adjustment layer, you'll see it turned everything red and it probably won't play back, but we'll just set it to about 5%. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely won't play back with the noise. So I always turn that off when I'm editing until I'm actually ready to export it. Beautiful. 
And of course, that's not quite, you know, where, where we would probably end up, but that's the general idea of how we get there. That nice kind of flat look, take out the blues, bring down the greens a little bit as well. Nice and stylized. These shots look really good through here. And then we pop over to our viewfinder, which again, looks different, but it's really, really close. Looks really, really nice. And we've got all those photos in there as well. And that's pretty much how we make a video. This is pretty darn close to the finished wow. product, I would yeah, say. This this came out awesome. I mean, yeah, you, I'm curious. Maybe we should much, post it today. Right? Yeah, maybe tonight we'll get it up. <laughs> there you go. I keep doing that. I have the stream deck and I have two shots labeled the same. So I keep playing. The oh, no. I live. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, you, that was awesome timing. You got a lot done. Olivia and Zach, I want to thank you for coming on and showing us your workflow. This is only day one. Yes. So keep in mind, they're going to be back with us tomorrow. Same time, 12 o'clock day two to do some more video content. But we've seen all the magic that you've done. This has come out amazing. Can't wait to see that rendered version, whether on YouTube or if we send it offline. But again, yeah. thank you so much. This came out so, so cool. Absolutely. It was yeah. super fun. Thank to work you guys for everyone. watching along. Yeah, absolutely. So don't go anywhere just yet. We have the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter coming up next. So stick around. And then after that, we got the Design in the Dark with Andrew Hawk Rattle. So we're not done just yet. We are done with this video segment. But again, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yep. All right, everybody. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Say bye. 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 All right, everybody. See you later.